All right, guys, this is going to be a little tutorial about how to change the brake pads off a 2012 Nissan Juke. So this is my mom's Juke. It's the Nismo. And um, she apparently went to change her, get in charge for the front, and the guy told her, dude, you're running on empty. You have no brakes whatsoever. Well, that's the left side of the, f of the right pad. And... This is this one. So as you can see, there is no meat whatsoever. It was basically a box of granite on the clips that are on the actual brake pad. And this is the new sucker right here. Full ceramic pads. So I went ahead and I changed the one already. So basically what I did was I jacked up the car, put the car in little stilts in the back so they don't roll back. Took out the tire. I actually loosened the bolts before, before I took out the tire. Uh, lifted it up, took out the tire unclip this and then I use a C-clamp which is this sucker right here to basically push back the cylinder the cylinder that's in here so you have more room for the pads because what happens is that the cylinder pushes forward as you brake and then they're pushed in this this cylinder is pushed in so you can't you can put the brake pads in here but it won't clip onto the actual disc so we push back the cylinder the solenoid all the way back once that's pushed back you put the brake pads in in the actual inner clip here you stick it this in there and it should fit that tight and you tighten it back up and you're gonna go on this side but before you jump to the other side always step on the brake pad so that way the solenoid gets pushed in and squeezes this tire this this uh this this brake because you don't want that the overflow of your liquid inside the actual the the reservoir for the brake fluid so i'm going to tighten this up i'm going to do the, oh, on that side and i'll show you that i'll show you guys that side over there right all right guys here we're on the other side so this is already kind of loosened up a little bit i jack up the car i get about uh, a little over a hand space not that high you don't want to go like crazy um so now these are all loosened up i'm going to take this out put the tire aside and once i do this i always i take the tire and i inspect the tire make sure there's no nails no screws, no shards of glass, nothing like that, no debris, anything that's actually was in there. Because sometimes you don't notice it. I've actually had a screw in one of my tires before that was there for over months. Because what happened was when I actually noticed it was because I was changing out my rotors. It was my Camaro a long time ago. I changed out the rotors and I noticed that it was a little dot there. I'm like, what is this? When I went to take it out, it was a nail. And the nail was so worn out, the top, the head of it. That you can top and running around that nail for about a good month and a half or whatever and not even leak no leaks but it was in there so i took it out plugged it up it was good to go but always check it might as well you have it off might as well check it you know saves you a little time in the future maybe some money so yeah so now he's gonna come off and i'll take it the next step all right guys lug nuts are all out now i'm gonna take the tire doing this one-handed by the way and put it to the side before I put it back in, I'll double check, make sure there's no nails or anything on there. And the tire goes there. Now you have your disc, your caliper with a with the solenoid in there, and this. This is a Harbor Freight wrench or socket wrench, better said. It cost me like $19. Came with the kit, both SAE and metric. I have this in the car at all times. I've actually used it a lot, and this actually looks pretty brand new, but it's been there for a while. It's been used for pretty much a lot. The hand's gonna beat up. Yeah, so this is a size 14 sock in the back. So I'm gonna take out these two screws, and I'll show you how to use the C-clamp to push this on the back in. Guys, this is this is the caliper. Pull out the screws. I always take them out, some people don't. I always take them out, and I put it usually next to the lug nuts so I don't lose them. I actually tend not to lose any stuff like that because I'm always conscious of what I'm doing, especially on the brake pads. All right, here you go. Take it out. <clears throat> and there's your cylinder. That big fucker right there. See how, how, flat, how far that thing's sticking out? That's got to go all the way in. All right, I told you guys you have to step on the brake first, so let's go do that. Tap on the brake a little bit. That's it. So that way now that one's pushed in. 
that other side's pushed in and the reservoir has dumped a little bit out and now let's push the sucker back in this is how you do it you get the seat clamp and you get an old pad let's just take off this random pad right here stick it here here like so you grab the seat clamp and you grip the back of the actual caliper and when doing so you tighten the seat clamp it compresses in and it pushes that solenoid in okay I'm gonna go do it on the do that and you start twisting this around until it pushes all, all right, the guys, way while in. I do this I'm gonna aim out over here so you can kind of see I'm gonna put my phone upside down so you can kind of see what I'm doing uh, I'm gonna give you guys a little quiz not a little quiz a little riddle actually a really a really a cousin of mine told me this not that long ago and it came to me real quickly the answer but I'm handy so I'm not sure if you're, if you're handy you probably know the answer if not then you won't know the answer all right so this guy is driving at night gets a flat tire right gets a blowout gets a flat tire so he pulls over to the side of the road you know he goes to his trunk takes out um takes out his spare and his tools and the everything takes everything out and he puts it to the side grabs a tire puts it on the side of the on the side of the car and starts taking off the old tire all right takes off the old tires gets the old tire goes back to the trunk puts it in the trunk closes the trunk and goes with the new tire so the guys there putting in the new tire looking around mind you it's dark he's in some random road he doesn't know anything about and he can't find any of the lug nuts what does he do i'm not gonna tell you the answer but i want you to do the answer on the comments below so i pushed back the cylinder you remember it was like up to here i pushed it back it went all the way in i'm gonna try to see i might be able to be able to push it back a little bit more but i think it should be fine now yeah it should be fine and now what i just take off the c-clamp by the way this is the old pad there's no meat on there whatsoever again about to hit that, that little clip all right now what you do is you put the new clamps in all these have little tricks so in this one you have to it has to clip onto this first then you push it in and it goes in like that they all have little tricks to them you'll see them when you take them apart it's not that big a deal they're usually all almost the same all right I'm gonna put the new one all right guys so there it is the caliper the brake the new brake pads and the disc now I'm gonna check the tire and put it back on here all right guys I'm just putting in the the nuts back into this thing the lug nuts you want to be it's very specific um so that's what your story for you my one of my good friends said that um he traded in he had this nice um uh genesis hyundai genesis and uh he wanted to get his tires rotated and he goes hey look your brakes are going back you got to change them out according to what he if i remember him telling me he says that he asked the guy or the guy told him or he found out somehow like that that the price to get his charge changed or his uh his uh his brake pads done was like 300 dollars or 400 dollars and he was like okay fine whatever didn't do them obviously and then never did the brakes instead he went in and traded his car i ended up doing research about more or less what the brembo brakes cost on a Hyundai Genesis if you want to be fancy if you want to like be real cheap with it you can go to Amazon they're like 75 bucks on an expensive note on a cheap note they're like 60 full ceramic I think they had some semi ceramic in there I didn't see any metallics on there but they're rubber brakes it's not that expensive I had a infinity g37 and I think it cost me at a hundred dollars for like the top of the line brakes the top of the line brakes and i was like almost pure stopping 100 stopping power on those brakes they're awesome brakes 
and it went down from 100 maybe it was like 100 and the most of the cheaper ones were like, like again 75 60 bucks or whatever he traded in his car because he was like i'm not spending that money on brakes let alone when he had to change the tires things are super expensive but yeah so he traded in his car for because of those brakes i am doing this video because i know some people out there are short of money it's not that expensive i'm not short on money but i just don't like paying anyone to do anything that you can do yourself especially something this job literally cost me 27 dollars right now because those brake pads were 27 dollars actually they're like 30 i had to return some stuff and i think what i had to return a couple of uh sockets that i didn't end up using and it, it came out to literally 27 dollars because of the exchange it's not that expensive guys anyone can do it i started this thing at what 12 30 it's like 110 about 40 minutes maybe an hour it could take me max i'm being lazy and slow and it's taking me longer because i'm doing this video <laughs> also guys today is december 25th christmas day and i'm doing this so there's no excuses guys just get it done don't be lazy and someone have someone pay for it don't pay for it do it yourself DIY, guys all right guys this is jesus the tool man i'm out have a wonderful holidays. Be safe. Have a happy New Year's. Don't drink too much. And, you know, have a good one.